So when you say T1 at the first evaluation, so you know, patient comes in, T1 high grade, you do your resection, you do your repeat resection, they don't have any pressing indications for a upfront early timely cystectomy, you do induction BCG, and then you take a look in their bladder and there's T1 high grade recurrence. So how would you define that patient? Yeah, I think this this is exactly what we're talking about as far as unresponsive disease. So now, you know, this is somebody that I'm I'm worried about. You know, they had their first induction course of BCG. You know, you're starting to talk about invasive disease that's still present. Now I'm starting to talk about early cystectomy, possible alternative therapies at this point. Yeah, and so technically, per the FDA, does this patient have BCG, unresponsive disease, they've just received their induction course, not a five plus two. Oh, you're saying just after the, the very first induction here. Yeah. Oh, right, right. So yeah, exactly. So first evaluation after adequate BCG for T1. Right. So this is somebody, but I still am worried about it, right? They still have T1 disease. Now we're looking at, is this someone who's still going to potentially respond to a second induction course or not? Yeah. And and I guess what I'm what I'm getting at is, you know, to me, the FDA definition is interesting in some ways. You know, it's these patients that you really worry about that they get their induction course and they've got persistent or, you know, worrisome disease, multifocal T1 high grade or diffuse carcinoma in situ. I feel like in my mind, I kind of think them as high ultra high risk players that, you know, should be eligible, say, for like a clinical trial. Or, or something a little bit more involved. I mean, you know, this patient specifically, I would counsel them towards like a cystectomy. But Eugene, what do you think? I mean, is that patient unresponsive per the FDA definitions? Yeah, I mean, I, they, per the FDA definitions and for clinical trial purposes, they certainly do fall into that category of BCG unresponsive disease, just an induction course only, and then having on your first three month assessment high grade T1 that would meet the criteria. I agree with the both of you. This is definitely a concerning situation that we run into. But I think, you know, a lot of us at academic centers, you know, I think the FDA criteria provides a very good framework and sort of tries to develop this more homogeneous cohort for which we could do clinical trials. But, you know, I think we also need to be mindful that, you know, the BCG unresponsive criteria is really just based off of expert opinion. It wasn't super data driven. There's been some post hoc analyses, you know, to sort of validate it. But, you know, you would think you know, we've been using BCG since 1976 or so. There's, you know, over 40 years of data. I think it would have been nice if, you know, we would have got together, pooled our data sets and sort of come up with a, a more, you know, sort of evidence based definition. But I think you know, the framework that we have now is is helpful and, you know, we're not going to go back. We're going to go forward. You know, Pembrolizumab's FDA approved. There's a handful of other agents that I'm sure we're going to talk about that will likely get FDA approved. And so, you know, I think when you're faced with that patient in clinic, though, you have to think, you know, where was the initial treatment? Where were the TURBTs performed? Because there's tremendous variability and the BCG unresponsive criteria for clinical trials doesn't factor in that initial tumor management, whether or not a restaging to URBT was actually performed or not. And I think that's very relevant when you're in that three month assessment. I think it's hard to tell is this biologically resistant disease or was this patient that just had, you know, disease that went unresected because they didn't have a restaging to URBT locally. And now you're you know, seeing this patient post BCG, I'm still worried about that patient, right? Because as Tim had mentioned, the, these are early invasive changes and this can be a very biologically aggressive tumor, but, you know, it's sort of what we see in clinical practice and what the clinical trial criteria are may not necessarily always merge. Totally. And I think this is a role for the enhanced cystoscopies, whether it's enhanced cystoscopy in the office or the blue light to URBT at the time of your, your repeat resection here, you know, I think that plays a role too. You know, the initial management, was this a blue light or enhanced cystoscopy at the time of the TURBT? Certainly if you're doing it now post BCG, I think this all helps you just sort of make sure that you've had a thorough analysis and all tumor was resected. 